What is going on guys? The verbal NDA for the pre-A2 testers has just been dropped, and so now we can really talk about it. So I'm gonna give you guys a brief, I don't have a lot of time here, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown right now of what your first day is probably gonna be like going into the world of Vera, giving you my impressions, and then tomorrow I'm gonna be live at twitch.tv forward slash Richie SH at like 10 a.m. Eastern time. So tune into that and I'll be answering a ton more questions. Leave your questions in the comments here. And yeah, starting out, when you go into the gateway of Lionhold, which we saw, this Lionhold is the probably most fleshed out area that we have in the alpha, which makes sense. It's your beginning experience, it's where you want to go. Within it, there's this crafting stations, there's questing, there's NPCs to kill, and there's vendors where you can buy some starter gear from, and all of that good stuff. And you get a mount right off the bat. There's a quest that introduces you to the professions, and at the end of that, you get a mount that you can ride around on, which is kind of slow at the moment. Hopefully, it gets bumped up in speed, but you're going to want that mount because the Riverlands is absolutely massive. With that being said, we have not tested this to what we're going to see on the 25th. There is definitely going to be some server issues. Server struggles and stability has been an issue throughout the entire two months of this. Steven has said dynamic gridding is not going to be online right away because the team had to reprioritize and focus on fixing bugs and all of that stuff. So that first weekend is probably going to be a rough weekend. There's going to be lots of server crashes until Intrepid gets those ironed out, but they haven't had that mass amount of players going into the gates yet. And it's really what you can expect. We get server crashes on day one of large MMOs. This is an early alpha state where thousands upon thousands of players are going to try to log into these servers and test it. So it's just is what it is. Content wise, roadmap is pretty much spot on what we're getting. I think the majority of the phase one roadmap is in the game already. And it's really, as Steven has said, this phase one is more of a stability test before they start pumping in more content. You have five nodes. All those nodes level up to stage three. The nodes have various buildings that the mayors can issue work orders for. Um, um, the mayorship is working, they can set the taxes, they can do all that sort of thing. But otherwise, like, once you get out of that starting zone, it's really gonna be grind time. You're gonna wanna group up with friends. The NPCs are tough. They're, a lot of them are meant to be hit with group farming. There's many points of interest you can farm, and the points of interest have various gear sets and stuff, and some of them unlock as nodes level up. So it's gonna be interesting, and I think a lot of people are expecting more still, but you're not gonna get more right off the bat. Class-wise, I've played the mage for the majority of this testing. I've dabbled in the other ones, but mage has been my primary. And mage, it feels it feels good. It feels like a typical mage. The damage, I feel like, is a bit light for what you want out of a mage archetype. But, like, it, again, it's an alpha. Nothing's meant to be balanced yet. They haven't done any balancing passes on this. We'll have to wait and see where these go. But you have the full arc, six archetypes that you got. They're fleshed out. They have level 25 skill trees. They all have a large variety of skills that you can go through. The weapons that Steven is shown in the roadmap stream. They all have skill trees as well. Functioning and the skill trees kind of tie into each other. Action combat is kind of meh. Like, I know they push this hybrid thing, but like if you're a caster in action combat and you turn to your right to attack a guy who's standing on your left and you cast it, and you aim in a certain spot, it still tracks to that target. It's not actually aiming your abilities. It's meant to feel like you're aiming your abilities. The only archetype I found action combat fun on is the fighter because swinging your sword is actually like action combat, swinging your sword and hitting them and you can swing your sword randomly wherever and it won't make contact. So I think the hybrid combat system still has a long ways to go. Tab feels great. I love the way tab target feels. You set up your rotation. Obviously some of the abilities need work and things like that. But overall, I think the archetypes are looking pretty good. Cleric, S tier, Cleric is OP. Bard, if you want to play a Bard, well, don't go solo. Bards are great with, they have speed buffs, they have mana regen, which is really helpful in the party, and you really need that mana regen at times. But if you plan on playing solo, don't go as a Bard, but I wouldn't really recommend playing solo anyways. As I said, a lot of the stuff is group content. There are some solo farming areas and stuff, but you're not gonna be able to get into the game and quest your way to level 25. It's just not a feasible option. You could do commissions in the node. The XP they give is crap. When it comes to professions, every single profession 
is represented in some way, some of them further along than others. For example, you can go through the process of mining, creating ingots, making armor molds, making that armor, bringing everything together. You can go through the whole steps, but some steps are just a placeholder. For example, with farming, there's no like farming setup yet. You just buy what you need from the NPCs and then talk to an NPC to process your goods. Every, I will say every profession is going to be a grind. They all tie into each other and that's kind of intentional, I believe, because it really makes you rely on those other professions. And the example I keep giving is with tailoring. So you wanna make a pair of shoulders and those shoulders, they require a cloth and then they require a carcass of some rabid rabbit thing that you get from hunting. In order to make that cloth though, first you need to get droppings from an animal and create a manure. Then you need to get the farm, the cotton seeds from the vendor and grow the cotton. And then you need to turn that cotton into a thread, turn that thread into cloth and then take that cloth with the animal you hunted and put them together to make the shoulders. So like it goes through various gathering professions and get various processing professions to get to that final piece. And so if you're gonna be crafting, do it with a guild, share your resources, it's gonna make it a lot quicker and a lot less of a grind. Overall though, like going from when they first started the pre-A2 testing to where we are now, it is night and day. The world visually didn't look like it does on the live streams in those first tests, and now it does. Server stability is a lot better than it was back then. Those first tests were just testing servers and making sure the servers could work and handle even the thousand players we initially had. So it's very much come a long way. Intrepid is very actively in the game, playing with you, taking feedback, building off that feedback and making tweaks within very fast amounts of time. Like we've seen massive changes from one week to another with builds. And I know Intrepid says the plan is big patches every six weeks and minor patches every three weeks and constant bug fixes. And they've been doing it within getting ready for Alpha 2. They've been doing that at a lot faster rate and we've seen a lot more coming in. Obviously that's gonna probably slow down once Alpha 2 launches because they need to get more back on track to a regular development cycle. Whereas right now it's all hands on deck. They're crunching, they're pulling people from other jobs to help fix bugs, to get these servers working. And it's gonna be a fun time. It's really gonna be a fun time, especially if you play with friends. But again, keep those expectations low because content wise, you are going to grind from level five to level 25 and it is going to be a long grind. Going from one to 10 takes like 10 hours of leveling and then it just an uphill climb from there. As you've heard, Steven say it's gonna take like 100 hours to hit 25 and it's gonna be a grind level after level after 10. And all you can do is group farm and kill NPCs. There's no, not really any high level quests or high level commissions that are gonna give you a mass amount of XP. There are world events and stuff that give pretty good XP. Otherwise, it's just going from place to place, grinding spot to spot, and completing that cycle. Obviously, you can craft and you can do the professions, caravans work, you can run caravans, and all of that. But again, phase one does not have really, I don't even think it outside of crafting, I don't think it has the content Alpha One had. Alpha One had a decent amount of quests, a decent amount of world bosses. Right now, it's just Tumok and Firebrand, the third Scorpion guy I have not seen yet. So it's going to be guilds getting those on farm and continuing through the process, continuing to upgrade your gear until we get into phase two and a lot more of that stuff comes online and we start to see the story arcs and all of that good stuff. But yeah, I just want to give you really my first impressions. It's going to be a fun time on the 25th. Drop your comments down below. I'm going to go through. I'll do another video just answering your guys' questions. As I said, twitch.tv slash richiesh, and I will be live tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time, to answer even more questions as we have five days left for Ashes of Creation until we are finally into Alpha 2. So drop your comments below and stay tuned for a lot more.